Hi, this is Britta LaFont from BrittaLafont.com. And um, today we're talking about Elizabeth George's Putting on a Gentle and Quiet Spirit, Lesson 12. It's called Suffering for Doing Good. Not one of the top 10 things that most of us would choose to do. So um, this continues our study of submission, submitting to others in order to submit to the Lord. So let's get right to it, and it is 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 18 through 20. Servants, be submissive to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the harsh. For this is commendable, if because of conscience toward God one endures grief, suffering wrongfully. For what credit is it if, when you are beaten for your faults, you take it patiently? But when you do good and suffer for it, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. Well, this is the hard pill for me to swallow. I'm of the camp that says, it's not fair. It's not fair. Um, I think I have always had a problem with things not being fair. When something wasn't fair, it really bothered me. And so um, I think that it's definitely uh, something, it's somewhat of a challenge for me. But now I understand more and more that um, God wants us to keep an eternal perspective. And he wants us to trust him that he is working out a plan that is for the good. And I think that the problem that we have when we uh, have that it's not fair complex like me, the problem is that comes from a place of not trusting God saying, God, you're not fair. Well, God never promised to be fair. He just promised to be right. So sometimes what is right doesn't feel fair. But we have to trust in his wisdom and trust that, that um, whatever is happening is happening the way it is supposed to be. I was telling a good friend of mine that I, I've had this prayer request. I've been praying about a relationship that's been difficult. And I've been praying and praying for reconciliation and the Lord has opened up this doorway for reconciliation. But it's been in such a way that was not how I expected. And it has um, not been very comforting. It's actually been a little bit hurtful. And yet I know that I have to put those feelings aside. I have to remember that if this is the way that the Lord is accomplishing this reconciliation, then it must be the best way. And so when I reframe it and I remember it that way, all of a sudden my anxiety and my um, hurt feelings, they just melt away. Now they come right back pretty quickly after that if I let them. But I just have to remember, ah, yes, the Lord answered the prayer. He did. And he answered it in such a way that I would not have chosen. But it must be the right thing. And then the peace comes back. So that's quite a comfort to know that when we remember God's goodness, we can, um, we can definitely endure a lot of things that are unfair um, and maybe hurtful. Now, the other thing I wanted to do was for us to kind of turn our gaze towards Jesus. Uh, he's a great example for dealing with difficult people. He had a lot of difficult people to deal with, and he was under unfair authorities here on earth. But I think um, if we think about it, we can see that he constantly spoke the truth. He never minced words. He did not um, hide behind anything. He spoke the truth in love, and when it promoted the gospel, he was able to confront people in such a way that uh, was true. He confronted Pharisees. He confronted um, disciples when they were wrong. And so uh, he didn't let something go by. On the other hand, he was very encouraging and gentle to those people that needed it. But in terms of submitting to authority, let's remember that Jesus paid taxes. Um, he also submitted to those people who were below him, in, in a sense. He submitted to his disciples by washing their feet. He tolerated Judas Iscariot. Um, nowhere in the Bible does it ever say that anyone had an inkling that Judas would be the one. Uh, because Jesus didn't treat him any differently. Even at the Last Supper, when Jesus knew it was Judas and sat there talking about him, he, he didn't treat him differently. And so, um, interesting to note that. Uh, 
at the very end of his life, he had the opportunity to talk to God about how it would go for him at the end. Now here he is talking to his ultimate authority figure and Jesus sees the suffering that is going to be coming. And this human part of him says, Father, if it's at all possible, please take this cup from me, but not my will, but yours. Because Jesus knew that the greater good would be accomplished always by obeying God. And that in the end, when we keep our eye on obedience to God and the greater good, then we ourselves are lifted up. Because the Bible says that because of Jesus' humility, because he was willing to die death on the cross, that um, he's been exalted so that, that every knee should bow at his name because he was humble and obedient. So there's a promise from God that if we are like Jesus, if we are humble and obedient, that he will lift us up. Now, he may not lift us up in person. Uh, he may not lift us up above the people. We may not see that. But in our hearts, if we're fellowshipping with God, um, there we are lifted up, just like I was a minute ago when I remembered his goodness. So um, I guess that's the thing to keep in mind, is that... Um, when God is asking us or placing us in a situation where someone is unfair with us, well, he hasn't gone to sleep at the wheel here. He's, he's there. He's there with us. And there must be a purpose for it. And when we trust in God's purpose and we trust in his goodness, um, we are able to keep that eternal perspective. And I think it gets us through a lot. I'm still working on this, but I have to say, I don't, I've never come as close to being able to um, tolerate these kinds of difficulties as I am now, knowing who, who God is and what he's doing in my life and understanding that his plan is bigger than just me and my happiness. So it's an important thing to keep in mind. Thank you very much and have a great weekend.